this particular session, we will first understand what is a cell and what are those essential components that makes up a cell. The cells which are present in living organisms, let it be plant, let it be an animal, let it be any organism. So we are getting the structure because of the smallest unit in our body which is called as the cell. This was the very first compound microscope. It does a lot of lot of job. It has been observed by this lens. Okay, it has been captured by that lens and it is magnified over there. So he basically observed empty cells. There was no cytoplasm, there was no nucleus, nothing. Why? This is a beautiful story of, you know, uh, how the scientific community can come together. So this is also asked in your foundations. This is asked in the meet examinations as well. Hello guys, welcome. This is Devika. I'm your biology mentor, your biology teacher and I welcome you to this very beautiful, interesting session where we are going to talk about the fundamental unit of life chapter. Yes, and in this particular session, we will first understand what is a cell and what are those essential components that makes up a cell. All right, so what's a cell? Is that a cell that you want, right? Which goes inside our electric equipments or your toys maybe? So some students do say, yeah, a cell is this. Yeah, absolutely not wrong about it, but that's not the cell cell in biology we talk about. Maybe in physics and chemistry you do talk about it. But here when we talk about a cell, we talk about the cells which are present in living organisms. Let it be plant, let it be an animal, let it be any organism. So those cells which make up the body of the organism, that's the cell that we are going to discuss today. Well, now are all of the cells just like same or are they different and uh, how about their functionality? Why are they so important? Let's find out in this particular session. So a cell is basically a structural and functional unit. Mind this very important in the definition of cell that we say it is a structural and functional unit of a living being of a living being then let it be the teeny tiny microscopic organism or let it be a big mammoth all of us have cells and on top of it we say structural right that means they give us the structure just like the bricks right just like the bricks when we build up a house we are making it with the bricks isn't it so those bricks, those small, small bricks that we put up over here, they will come and form a wall and those walls do come together to make up this entire house. Same is the case with us as well. So we are getting the structure because of the smallest unit in our body, which is called as the cell. On another hand, we are also calling it as the functional unit. That means this uh, cell, right? This unit is not just giving us this structure, but they are also carrying out functions. Functions like mm, visualization, carrying of oxygen, filtration, uh, absorption, digestion, so many different things, right? Secretion of different substances. All of these are function and they are carried out individually inside these cells as well, right? So now, Cells are the microscopic structures. They are the smallest, smallest unit of our body. And you cannot just see a single cell just like that. Okay, that's why we call them as the microscopic structure. They are so small that you have to basically take up a microscope to observe them. Just a fun fact for you guys over here, right? So in a human body, so when a, we are talking about cell and we are made up of so many cells, our structural unit is cell, how many units? That means how many bricks are inside you? The cell named bricks. So we have near about 100 trillion cells inside our body. Yes, our body is made up of near about 100 trillion. Can you even imagine how many zeros are going to go behind that 100 over there? Find it out and put it in the comment box, right? So now, the cells, as I'm telling you that the cells are so small, they are so microscopic that you cannot see or observe one single cell just without the microscope, right? So we need microscope to see the cell, one cell, to understand the structure. 
Now, microscope story just didn't come up just like that, okay? It didn't one fine day, it was not built, right? Just like the Rome was not built in a day. Similarly, microscope also evolved and today we have much advanced microscope about which I'll tell you in a while. So, the invention of microscope was done by Anthony von Leeuwenhoek. Anthony von Leeuwenhoek was a Dutch draper, by the way. A draper is a person who is basically dealing with the cloths of the curtain. Right? So that was his family business, but he had a keenness towards observation, towards science and innovation that not only led to the discovery or invention, not discovery, this was invention, right? To the invention of the microscope, but but he is also known as the father of microbiology. Isn't it fantastic? So the microscope that he invented was extremely simple. Very, very simple. There is a lens, okay? And uh, there, this is the sample holder where you will put the sample and then you'll observe. So Anthony von Leeuwenhoek used to collect samples from the pond, from his teeth scrape and used to load it over here and watch it. Okay, then there would be a screw which would help you to adjust the height of the specimen with that of your lens and light, right? So that you can magnify those things and observe it. So this is a very, very, very simple microscope that was developed by Leeuwenhoek. But as I told you, this was not just the end of it, right? It started evolving slowly. The story of microscope goes back into 1590s. Can you imagine? 1590s. So, Anthony von Leeuwenhoek's story, the simple microscope that comes in the 16th century, this starts in 1590 and it was Zacharias and Jens and his father Hans who actually has developed a instrument kind of a thing which was able to, uh, you know, magnify things. So, he mounted two lenses in a tube. He took a tube and then he mounted two lenses over there and this was the very first compound microscope. Okay, this was the very first attempt to make the microscope in 1950 by Zachary Sachs and his father Hans. Then uh, in 16th century, 1609, Galileo Galilei, do you know this name? I'm sure you must be. Right, so Galileo Galilei basically constructed a compound microscope with a convex and a concave lens. Now, here this guy is Hans and his son. Uh, they actually used only two lenses, but Galileo Galilei used a concave and a convex lens. lens. And then he placed in such a way that the things were getting more magnified. And... Maybe that's the reason why, you know, he was able to do so many observations and mind-blowing uh, theories that he has given us. Then comes Anthony von Leeuwenhoek, about which we have spoken, right? This was a very simple but yet very functional microscope, so the invention goes to him, right? Now today, do we have such kind of simple microscope? In your schools, right, you must be seeing a compound microscope, isn't it? So, this compound microscope is very simple, by the way. Now, why are we calling it as a compound? Because here we have lenses, okay? We use two lenses for this. What happens over here? Uh, we'll see in a while. But this is a compound microscope. I'll also explain you the uh, parts of a microscope, okay? And their uses as well. On the other hand, as I was telling you, today we have developed a very, very, very advanced, well-advanced microscopes and those are called as electron microscope. So, you need not go and peep into the microscope. You see the images loud and clear on the computer screens and you can record it. You can take photographs directly from there. It does a lot of, lot of job and it increases the image of the single cell or the microscopic substance that you're observing many many folds right so the compound microscope how does it work and what is its function so let's first understand the structure of it Hena, what are all of this so here you can see there's a base 
uh, the base on which this microscope is standing right right above that you have a light source over here right so from here the light would be emitted now where the light should go the light should go on the specimen where is the specimen placed the specimen is placed this is the stage okay this is the stage so on here we will put our slide this is the place where the slide would be kept and on the top of slide you will make a mount of your material over there right so for that now uh, you have to adjust the light and you have to adjust the length and all those things for that we have these things okay the knobs the fine core setting and the uh, core settings so it uh, moves the stage up and down all right then we have objective lenses what are these objective lenses they have different paths 100x being the uh, largest one over here okay 40x 30x all such kind of lenses are there which will maximize uh, the capability of us to magnify things then you have the neck okay you have a nose piece which holds up to this uh, objective lenses and then finally comes the observing tubes and your eyepiece where you place your eyes and observe it and right observe the material that you have placed on the slide now here what's the principle for this so whenever we put a sample over here now whenever we keep a sample over here what do we do the sample is basically placed and then we put it for focusing right so i told you focusing is done how it is done by this fine knob and the core focus knobs okay which will move the stage up and down so when we do so uh, what happens it comes close to the objective lens this one right it comes close the specimen comes close to the objective lens now there is a virtual erect magnified image which is obtained at the least distance region from the eye and the lenses so this is magnifying it okay this is how it travels the image is made over here okay the image is first it has been observed by this lens okay it has been captured by that lens and it is magnified over there right then it is formed over here and that's how you can see it okay from here you will see it right so this is how you can see so that erect image has been formed over the magnified one is uh, because of the light and the glasses it is reflected over here and from there you can see it that's how you can actually see the magnified image all right then comes the electron microscope this electron microscope is so efficient so efficient that it can magnify near about you know near about 20 30 folds time it can magnify the image than a common or an ordinary compound microscope okay so how do the cell look under the microscope when you have placed it how do they appear to you this is something how they appear to us okay so this is a slide for a live uh, leaf right it is a slide for leaf in which you can see this chloroplasts right this green color things that you are seeing over here right those are the chloroplast on the other hand this one over here both of them are plant tissue how can you make it you can make it out by the perfect shapes of it right so this is due to there are cell walls present here also you can see the perfect shapes and the nucleus at the periphery that tells us ki, oh that's a plant cell right and this one over here is a onion cell so this is in our activity basically to observe it under the microscope right so this is not usually blue you have to give a stain and then it turns blue this one is without any staining and that's why you are able to see the green colors over here Okay. Now, how and when this story started of the cell? So, this started by this great man, Robert Hooke. Okay. Robert Hooke was the one who actually termed the cell to the small units. So, how was this done? So, he was also a great observer, right? So, he used to love observing things. One fine day, he thought, oh, why not let me observe a cock? right let me observe a cock okay cock is a uh, 
plant structure theek hai so he took a slice of it and then he observed it under the microscope when he observed it under the microscope his drawings published by him that was his drawings okay he drew this and here you can see small box like structures okay here you can see small box like structure and this box like structures were making him recall something else what was that it was the montessori castles what's a montessori cell so this is a small room which the monks use monks means the sadhu and all right so the monks use to uh, stay and pray right so these are small small cells they are called as cells the montessori cells and when hook observed it it just you know gave him oh this looks like a cell and he called it as the cellulae and that's how robert hook coined the term in 1665 cell so it is very very important to remember who coined the terminology cell it was robert hook in the year of 1665 and how by observing the cork cells theek hai he called them as the cellula small rooms all right fantastic now this findings over here let's see what he has observed these are his original drawings uh, from his paper so what did he observe he just observed empty boxes isn't it so he basically observed empty cells there was no cytoplasm there was no nucleus nothing why because he was observing cork cells right so the cork cells are the bark of the trees basically and they were already dead cells so no problem only so he observed dead cells now what about the living cells then who observed the living cells for the first time so once again this guy okay anthony von leven hook itself theek hai so as you know he was very keen in observing things he used to collect water scrap his teeth and observe everything around him right so he discovered microscopic organisms called as protozoa so from the pond water obviously he'll get all the protozoa amoeba paramecium right euglenas and all so the first living cell was discovered by anthony von leven hock itself all right theek hai now the living cells uh there was a theory now this was very old right in 16th century things were going on and anthony von leeuwenhoek on the other side observing living cells robert hook calling them the cells this was all 16th century is ka story now there were decades people were just you know going on with the natural sciences and many theories came and went but there was one single theory called as the cell theory and this cell theory was not a discovery of a single man this is a beautiful story of you know Uh, how the scientific community can come together to bring up a change or to bring up the discoveries all right so here this cell theory was proposed by three people the first one was m j sheldon so m j sheldon was a botanist by the way botanist is a person who works with the plant and researches on the plant right so he was a boston botanist and in 1838 somewhere he says uh to the natural scientist community hey you know uh that this cells are made up of the plants are made up of many many cells it's not one cell I said well very good fantastic then there is theodore shon same year near about okay so in 1938 ka endings and 39 ka startings this guy also came up with what with one finding he was a zoologist so what did he say you know what theodor said you know what children even animals are made up of many many cells they said oh fantastic let's bring it together and there comes the cell theory right there comes the cell theory now was uh, this cell theory was put together by both shon and sheldon theek hai they proposed it in front of the natural science community natural science committee those time there was no special physics chemistry biology difference right they were falling under the natural science itself and the committee said hey uh, you are all right but can you please tell us so many cells are making plants and so many cells are making 
animals from where these many cells are coming. Now, today you and me know that all oh, these cells are coming from the original cells itself. It's not a big thing. But back then, it was a big challenge. They said, oh, that we really did not think of. Let's think what has happened. Right? So, in 1839, they have uh, given this to significant uh, findings of this right so one was that all living organism plants and animals are composed of cells two the cells are the basic unit of life this was very clear but how are the new cells being formed fine then comes physician rudolf richard so in the same year he was also simultaneously working these people are working in different places okay they had no connection same place he was a doctor by the way and a surgeon in that okay so whenever he used to make a cut and then do the surgery he thought he oh i did not put a patch over here but still the cells have formed and the wound has healed right and it is happening every time so that means this cells are originating from the pre-existing cell but he did not say it like that he said it in the famous terminology that has come up omni cellule cellulae that are his wording okay and a very famous term so this is also asked in your foundations this is asked in the neat examinations as well okay so omni cellule cellulae was said by Rudolf Richo, who was a doctor. And now there was the answer to the Natural Science Committee. So now what happens? Rudolf Richo, Shedol, uh, MJ Sheldon, and Theodore Sean, all of these three come together and then gave the silent features of the cell theory. Now the cell theory was completed. So what are the silent features? Silent features with the key takeaway point from the cell theory. So the first two will remain the same, isn't it? All living organisms are made up of cells and the cell is a basic unit. Third one which came up was all living cells arise from the pre-existing cell itself. Omni cellulae cellulae. There was one more to be added and that was that the viruses do not follow cell theory viruses are quite different all right so that's how cell theory was proposed now what is the significance of this cell theory why it is so important because once the cell theory was formed today this is very simple for us okay but once the cell theory was formed it was sure that we have to study the cells we have to understand the structural unit of a living organism so that we can understand the organ so that we can understand the organ system and finally the organism right so that's how we have uh, started understanding the cell more and more now there is some important important events that has happened in the past which with the cell biology we should understand and remember as well as much as possible so many of this we have already talked about uh zacharis jansen the first microscope basically rate invented the first compound microscope then robert hook 1665 you know that he has given the terminology cell and Levin Hawk in 1674 has actually started observing the living cells. Till here it was all dead cells. Now the living cells like bacteria, protozoan, he were doing the observation and also drawing to publish it in the papers. Then comes Robert Brown. Okay, So this is somewhere in 1831. Okay, I am trying to go in a chronological order. All right. So 1831. This basically, uh, his experiments, right, actually demonstrated the presence of nucleus in the cell. Okay, so very important guys, Robert Brown, who discovered nucleus? Robert Brown, 1831, discovered the nucleus. Then comes the Jonathan Purkinje, right, so in 1839, he coined the term protoplasm, right? Protoplasm, the cell components basically all together, living components, of course. Then comes 
singer S. J. Singer and J. L. Nicholson, they gave the structure of plasma membrane and they said that the plasma membrane is of a fluid mosaic model. We'll surely definitely definitely understand why fluid mosaic model, why a uh, plasma membrane has no other structure but only fluid mosaic model. How is it? all in the coming classes all right then when we'll talk about plasma membrane shortly camelio golgi discovered the golgi apparatus the golgi body the golgi complex anything all the same all right then comes george emily paladi so this have actually observed the ribosomes in animal cells and finally carl benedo carl Beneda termed mitochondria Carl Beneda. So these are basically the important important findings in the cell biology thing. All right. Thank you. That's all for today. And soon we will now get into the morphology of cell and understand the size, shapes, and structures of different cells. Till then, keep learning. See you soon. Take care.